Ian. Is this Bob? Yeah. Hey. Hi, Paul. How are you? I just <laughs> calling you. I know. I saw you calling there on my on my cell there. How you doing? Now, let, I want to be sure. Your last name is spelled is 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 pronounced uh, Kudla or Kudla? Yeah. He, um, Kudla is fine, and uh, the best pronounce is way is Kudla. Kudla. Could luck. Oh, yeah, okay. like could luck. Like I, I could do it. Could okay, luck. I could luck. Okay, I got you, Bob. Could luck. Well, you can do it. As a matter of fact, welcome to the broadcast. This is the coming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I met you uh, about a month ago, I guess, and uh, we had lunch, and um, I was fascinated by uh, your story. I, I really was fascinated. Uh, what you do? The name of your company is uh, Trader Gen- Genius. Trader Genius. And so uh, give us a little bit of your background, just a little bit so the folks that are listening here, uh, for instance, your education and that kind of thing. Tell them a little bit about you. Yeah, sure. So uh, I grew up in Pennsylvania. I went to college there. Uh, I studied uh, uh, marketing and uh, a concentration in accounting. And afterwards, I became an officer in the Marine Corps. I served active three years and total of seven with reserve. And when I got out of the Marine Corps, I was hired uh, by a big uh, software computer company uh, out of Minneapolis called Control Data, which became Ceridian. And I was primarily in sales, but about halfway through my career, as I was moving up the ranks, I got involved in doing M&A work, and which is mergers and acquisitions and helping our company buy other software companies. And so I headed that up for the last 10 years of my career. And then I moved over to an accounting firm called RSM McGladry and uh, did some acquisitions for them in their business services division. And then once we got bought out, uh, I went ahead and that was about 10 years ago. I kind of retired and kind of reflected on what I wanted to do next. And so I decided to take my uh, background in, in business and finance and acquisitions and strategic planning. And I always had a passion for trading. So I started to uh, trade on the side and I started another small little business to uh, make sure I had enough income coming in. And that led me into uh, selling my uh, stock signals. So more and more people were asking me why I'm doing so well in the stock market, if they could get some tips from me and how to uh, uh, be better at trading. And one thing led to another, and I started uh, uh, selling my signals and advising people on you know, how they can become better traders. And I've been doing that since uh, 2011, and you know, that's now going on our sixth year of doing it. So it's amazing. Okay, so your, your extensive background, I appreciate your service also for, for our nation uh, in the Marine Corps. Well, thank you. Service. Thank you so much for that. Um, and, you know, so you have extensive background especially with uh, mergers and acquisitions and, and software companies. And, and um, are you an actuary? Just asking. Oh, no, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, know, I, more, of a, more of a finance guy. Okay. But your story, folks, here's the thing. As, as what we do, Bob, of course, is we cover the current world events every day here. Thousands of folks gather, and we take a look at what's going on across the world and how does it relate to Bible prophecy. And a lot, I was even asked this question, I was, I was being interviewed by the Hagmans last night on their broadcast, and they asked me, uh, of, you know, of these four things, which do you, are, are you concerned the most? One of the four was an economic collapse or a, you know, the currency value depleting or falling or, you know, stock market or, or uh, the economy as far as job market, all these different things. People are concerned about those things without question. And when you look at it from a biblical standpoint, you know, we do know there's a day coming. The Bible talks about the uh, mark of the beast, okay, where you can't buy or sell unless you're in the system. But before that even, it talks about uh, the black horsemen of the apocalypse where the prices will fluctuate uh, like balances, like a scale. But what I'm hearing you say the other day at lunch was that you've studied weather patterns. And we do too. Uh, I mean, we do earthquakes, sinkholes, 
all kinds of you know extreme weather conditions, typhoons, t- uh, tsunamis, tornadoes, hurricanes, you name it. Uh, uh, but you said you study the um, weather patterns of the world and found that there was a uh, algorithm in this. Can you can you help us understand that first? Oh yeah, certainly. And so as part of our trading is that we're very interested in the the commodities markets. And so we follow them very closely, but there is a um, an algorithm is a, is a good word for it because it's a repeating pattern in that you know, right now the the mainstream media is telling everybody to worry about global warming, but that's not what's going to happen. Okay. Is there's a pattern and and they repeat if I get too verbose just uh just uh shorten me up here Paul but there's a pattern that repeats every three years every 18 years every 30 years every 60 years and every 200 years and, and these are patterns that are are governed by the uh, the moon and the sun and it's not astrology or any of that crazy stuff it's really a lot to do with the uh, the output of the sun and how it affects the heat hitting the earth and the gravitational pull of the moon and how it affects uh, the wind and the wave and the tidal patterns. And so all this in, in short creates warm periods for the earth and cool periods for the earth. And uh, question. So we've been in a very... Question, just, uh, then don't, uh, just one question. Do solar flares, sure. do solar flares releasing CMEs, does that disrupt the pattern or is it part of the pattern? Well, you know, uh, CMEs are kind of their own animal, and so uh, usually what's interesting is, is well, answer, your, answer your question shortly, it'll affect the Earth in a very short period of time, but really intensely, and if you get a straight-on solar flare CME event, you know, like they had in the mid-1860s, right. it, it could be lights out for the Earth, okay. but uh, uh, normal normal ones are, will affect the Earth for a day or two and cause some electrical dis, you know, disruptions and, and things like that. But from a strategic standpoint, for the long cycles, it, it does not. Okay, okay. I, I'm sorry for jumping and, in there. Go ahead, pick back up. Oh, no, no, at. no. This is this, this fascinating conversation. So, so what happens is now is that we've been in a very benign period. And, and so people have what to call a recency bias. They think what happened yesterday is going to happen tomorrow. And when you get these, uh, these events that line up, and all of them are lining up, the three, the, three, the 18, the 60, and the uh, and the 200 are all lining up for. It started in 2010, and it's going to it's going to culminate by 2030. And this, what it's going to do, it's going to drive the weather of the Earth down cooler, just a couple degrees. But that's all that matters. And once that happens, is the northern and southern latitudes where the grain belts are located, are some of those are going to go offline. So, you know, if you're in Canada, northern China, uh, Russia. Uh, Australia, you're, you're going to see uh, failures of the, the wheat harvest. And then if you're in China, somewhat a little bit in the U.S., uh, you're seeing it in France now, you're, you're going to see the uh, um, you know, corn harvest start to affect. And in fact, in China, I don't know if you've been following, I'm sure you have, Paul, but um, China's going through floods of, of, if I dare say, biblical proportions. Right. They've gotten so much rain that uh, there, there are four or five of their provinces, which are bigger than like two or three of our states, are literally underwater. And millions of their livestock are being killed, yeah. and 35 to 40 percent of their corn crop is now underwater. Wow. And it's not being reported because China did a blackout on the news once this flood started. Yeah. And so once China goes into the market for grain because they have to feed their family, right. is that it's going to drive food prices higher. So and stop so that's right my there. Interest in it, and stop. nobody else is. Oh, go ahead. Stop right there. And the folks here are listening. They know I reported on the China flood. How there was 170 dead, 111 mi- missing, and but I heard that the flood waters were of, and you can say it, biblical proportion. And you're exactly right. The media in China was shut off, and matter of fact, they shut off the social media. For the people in China, so they couldn't even post it uh, on their social media there, and and so they couldn't communicate it. So as you say, the death toll is way higher. The animals, the livestock, their corn, 
35 to 40 percent of their if 35 percent of their corn output or yield has been destroyed by floods then they're going to make a massive rush to the world market to buy uh, corn and that's going to drive the price of that those commodities sky high am i right is that what you're saying that's what i'm saying so right now the world has a stockpile because of the of the el nino event and once that's gone you know you're talking between now and 12 months from now we'll probably see a doubling of corn prices and wheat prices and probably soybean too because it's not just china that this happened to paul you know france and the thing about the government as you well know is that france said oh, only 10 percent of our wheat is at risk to all the rain they got and then it became well it's actually 22 percent well yesterday now it's 50. and the other thing is is that this it's not just that the wheat, it's the quality of the wheat. If right. it's not fit for human consumption, then even more of it's going to go offline. And that's what's happening in China. Happened in Brazil two weeks ago, 30% of the, of the coffee trees in tropical Brazil got hit with frost. So they lost all their beans for this year and probably next year too. And I just wondered if I could segue back to China for a second. You know that social media blackout? Yeah. It's actually... It actually is causing people to die because these people have no way to communicate with each other saying, hey, it's flooding upstream from you. Get out. Right. And they said hundreds of people have died. And they're, now, they're, now they're starting to go after the officials because of this blackout is that people died because they had no warning. The officials told them, hey, stay in your home. Everything's OK. You know, they didn't want to lose face. And then whole villages got wiped out. Wow. So, you know, the yeah, absolutely. Absolutely insane. You know, I do a little more research on it. They, they think they think the missing are up over the thousands now. The death, the the economic toll right now is twenty two billion, and we know how governments lie to you. So it's probably double that. It's already the fifth worst economic natural disaster from weather in, in history, and probably be number one when it's done. It's still raining there, Paul. <laughs> but you know, raining. Bob, Bob. So, here's the thing. You just explained something way greater than Katrina. You just, you just, you just, uh, look, China's the largest nation in the world. If 40% of their corn is gone, the it's still raining like Noah's days. Uh, people, it's not 170 dead, it's thousands are dead, and, and hundreds of thousands have been evacuated, millions probably have been evacuated, and this is not being reported. We're watching this uh, Democrat National Convic Convention this week, it's all... Uh, peaches and cream and happiness and balloons and the world is such a sweet place when in reality we are we are facing wars and rumors of wars nations are rising against nations we're seeing uh, apocalyptic catastrophic events uh, 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 all around the globe it's been thunderbolts killing people lightning strikes have killed more people of the year than ever in history Last year, we broke the record for the most earthquakes over 6.0. Last year, we broke the record for the most volcanic eruptions. So here, you're the guy. You're the guy that studies this intensely because you know then that's go Then you look at how much of commodities are available on the market, and you can pretty well figure out by the consumption rate when these supplies are going to be lean and the prices are going to go. And so you're beginning to invest in companies that you know their stock will rise. Is that what I'm hearing? That's right. We're actually going directly into the uh, the grain markets directly. And everybody can, Paul. So they can go on. There's an ETF for for the grains called JJG. There's ETFs for general agricultural commodities called DBA. You can go in by CORN or WEAT. And I encourage people, you know, they don't go crazy right now. Watch the, the trends on it, but start adding a position because you're going to have to feed your family and you know and when this happened last time you know a minimum of a double maximum of five time increase in food and yeah. so you know the you know the, the biblical reference is a day wage just for a just for a you know a, a day's worth of barley you know right. which is the, was the cheap food for the poor right you know uh, th those that is not outside of the bounds of of, of, of reasonableness. Well, Bob, and, you know, if you knew me and you met me, I'm a pretty calm guy, and yep. and this has me a bit alarmed. You know, folks, he is. I met him. This is Bob Kudla there in uh, California. His company, Trade Genius. Uh, I was fascinated by our conversation. 
um, uh, while that, that for lunch that day, and I began to get the picture. And I was sitting back listening to you thinking, okay, here's a guy that's studying the algorithms of the weather, and he knows the direct effect of it on the market. And so, um, and then I'm looking at what the Bible says that the weather, extreme weather conditions, and the apocalyptic events that will happen, no wonder there's going to be food shortages and commodities, and no wonder governments of the world or a new world order, a one world government, would want to control all that. And that's why we're seeing the laws changing here in America and in other nations to a socialistic drive. I mean, this is a socialistic drive or a, it's a, a progressiveness toward a one world uh, government. Let me ask you, I mean, look at Venezuela, Bob. Look at Venezuela. The, is is the weather got anything to do with their food shortage, or is it just the socialistic change that they took? Oh, they they just simply shot themselves in the head by being socialist. They they drove the price that they allowed uh, people to sell their product below the cost of production. And of course, the natural thing is nobody's going to produce at a loss. Right. And so the production went away, and which is shame because it's probably the, one of the richest nations in the world from resources, and, and they destroyed the uh, their economy. Now, you know, if things get bad, you know, in Venezuela, you know, they've had snow in July twice up on their mountains, which is highly unusual. Right. What's... So, you know, it's 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 it's. Uh, Where's Al yeah, Gore? They're, they're... Where's Al Gore when it's snowing in July? Where where is Al Gore? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. You know, when you talk about the lightning strikes, I'll give you an interesting tidbit. Okay. Is that, you know, a lightning is like an arc, like a spark plug arc. Okay. And as the sun as the sun gets quiet, it, it calms the uh, and expands our, our atmosphere because you don't have the, the solar winds pushing on the earth. And so it increases the gap, which causes the lightning strikes to be stronger. So when you're, you're reporting that you've done, Paul, on on the craziness of the lightning and the powerfulness of the lightning, yeah. it's just going to get worse and more intense. You know, last week they had a thunderstorm in Chicago, and lightning hit the platform for the L train, uh, blew the roof off of it, what? shut the train down. I mean, it's never happened before. These things are supposed to be grounded. It's so powerful, it just it just ignored it. Now, Bob, so, Bob. It's just amazing to me. Okay, now, Bob, we've got a guy that we bring on uh, last uh, about three years or so. We, he, he doesn't give his full identity because he still works for the federal government. But uh, he gives us some information of things to look for in the future based on information that they have, some intel they have, as it relates from what's called an atmospheric compression upon the earth, which yep. will, and, and, and will also, whether that's being caused by a, a, a binary, a, 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 another planet, whether it's Planet X, Nibiru, Planet 7X, planet number 9, I don't care, or nothing out there, or God took a deep breath. I, it don't make me no difference. The Bible says the heavens are going to shake, okay? Jesus said the stars will fall from the heavens like a fig tree casting its untimely figs. Every mountain and island going to be moved out of their place. So I know what the prophecies tell me. I don't know why it's happening, and I don't know how long the process takes. We don't get that information in the Word. But, but we just get the, the realization that these signs will come. So, you now, you're talking, so you're confirming what he said would be there'd be these extreme thunderbolt lightning strikes. So, do you, do you feel or do you have any information or, or that maybe there is a planet X that's actually putting the pressure on the Earth and, and the gravitational pull? I don't know. I don't know so much about Planet X, Paul, because I really haven't followed that too much. Other than they've confirmed that it does exist okay. now by actually by you know the JPL here in California, and I think it'll have effect on meteorites. But I need to look at it a little further. But we don't even have to go that far for that to uh, to that to, to prove the atmospheric compression. There's there's a theory out there called the electric universe, and so as these certain alignments of the planets cause different gravitational pulls on the sun, which causes the um, uh, changes in, in our um, the magnetosphere that allow these atmospheric compression kind of events to occur. And they've already started. I know, you know, if, you, if you've noticed, some of these storms, 
what happened in France and Italy just a month ago, that was an atmospheric compression event. In Bangladesh, 42 people died in a lightning strike in an atmospheric compression event. So these things are already happening. And this, this nonsense about the warmer world causes greater rain, well, that's not how physics works. You know, if the air is warmer, it can hold more moisture. When the air is colder, it can't hold the moisture. And so the troposphere or the, uh, the stratosphere, you know, it, as it gets colder, it, it causes these, these thunderstorms that are rising into the top of the tropopause to absolutely just dump, dump their, their rain. And you see the hailstorms that are happening around the world, just yeah. outrageous. We don't get hail unless the upper atmosphere is extremely cold, and it is. So I think the Planet X thing now, that goes from conspiracy theory to fact, as it comes closer to the Earth as it is, they don't think it'll come into our solar system, but it doesn't have to. It'll start moving things around in the Oort cloud that will start sending comets our way. And so those are the things that those guys are concerned with. So we have that to contend with next, Paul. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. Just thanks. Well, I'm glad we got the answer. Uh, Jesus Christ is the answer, okay? I mean, and at, at the end of the day, it still comes putting our faith in the Lord. I know you know that. I appreciate the fact that, you know, yep. your, your faith in Jesus and, and what the Lord has done. Let's take this now to your company. It's called Trade. Sure. Uh, uh, your company's name is trade genius and where's your website at well, can you help us on that yeah we're yeah we're www.tradegenius.co okay. and what we do when people ask what do we do we, we provide education you know we we try to teach you how to be a a fisherman and not just fish for trade but we also provide stock signals to allow people to get in the best trades at the best time and then we focus on things like commodities and gold and silver and things of that nature. So when when secular trends uh, are upon us, like we think with the agricultural stocks and with gold and silver because of the negative interest rates, you know, we look for opportunities to buy. And so that's what we share with people. But go to our website. We have uh, free videos. We've done a couple hundred of them already. And... People can check them out. I do one or two a day. Okay. We have some trading tips that we put in there. Uh, we we offer uh, some paid training, some free training. And, uh, you know, we have a blog that we talk about uh, different things as well. So we have a mixed bag of things that are free and things that will obviously be charged for. That's our our business. But the, the, the return on investment for people is, is fantastic. We average between 60 and 100% a year return on our stock picks. And we even have a service now for people that have small accounts. It's called binary options. It's a way in which you can take a small account and make it big enough so that you can trade in the regular markets. And we have a very high win rate on that as well. And so you can you, get in for like a hundred dollars, and in a year you could turn a couple hundred dollars into four or five thousand dollars. And we help you through that every day. So and we price our service very, very modestly. So do you? So if a person uh, signs on with your company sets up an account with your company, uh, do you give them, do you trade for them, or do you just help them learn how to trade, and do you show them, or do you kind of guide them in which stocks they should buy or when they should sell? Yeah, so what we do is we don't trade for anybody, so we, we're more of an education type of, of, of service, but we do tell people this is a stock that you should probably buy at this price, and we tell people this is probably a good time for you to sell. And then we tell them this is what a, a stop you should put in in case the trade doesn't work the way we thought. So we're more of an education than a um, uh, than a actual like a a financial advisor. I got it. I got so that's what we it. do. And you're basing it yeah. though. And that's so, okay. And, you, and I'm re I'm reading your statistics, folks. Eighty two percent yield in the year two thousand thirteen. Eighty eight percent in two thousand fourteen. 92% in 2015. So so that's 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 Hall of Fame numbers, okay? That's Hall of Fame numbers, uh, Bob. You do realize that uh, if you can hit them that well. So and yeah. you're basically and we're 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 already and we're already 80% so far this year, Paul. And everything we record all our trades on Twitter so people can go ahead and review them. And then we give people a free trial so they can check us out to make sure that we are who we say we are. 
Very good. I know. I met him, folks. I met him. I had lunch with him. You know, <laughs> look someone in the eye, listen to them talk, see the body English, and understand that you're talking to someone who's telling you the truth, absolutely telling the truth. And so I, it didn't take me long. It didn't take me five minutes to figure out that you were a, a, an individual who had a tremendous knowledge and had a good heart, and you were a brother in the Lord. And then the other part that I really was admiring was this fact that you want to help the people to understand, and you're not you're not saying just the big players. You're saying just about anybody could, uh, you know, figure out how to get in this if they wanted to. And um, there is always a risk. There's always a risk anytime you're in the stock market doing anything in the market. But uh, through prayer, and I, and the other thing I'm really fascinated with is you're watching the uh, the weather's which the weather plays such a role in the Bible and prophecy, it's unreal. It's unreal. So, uh, because whatever's going on in the spiritual world manifests is physically. So you're watching the weather patterns and how they affect the commodity markets of the market. Because, and, and you've studied these rhythms. There's actually rhythms. And so the stock market then has rhythms. And you say, yeah, that's because the weather has rhythms. Is that correct? That that's right. There's there's absolutely it's it's mathematical and there's nothing that Al Gore, there's nothing that the Federal Reserve, there's nothing that President Obama, uh, you know, can do to stop what's going to happen. And and you know the interesting thing about this is that you know the last three times we had food price spikes, it stopped the stock market from going up. So it actually is a break on on the people that wanted to base us into obscurity. You know, in 2011, we had the, uh, you know, the Arab Spring, right. and food prices went up. In 2008, we had the rice riots in China and the rice shortage in the U.S., and commodities went through the roof, killed the, uh, the 2008 uh, rise. And in 1999-2000, it happened again. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's a cyclical pattern, and you just have to, you know, you just have to have your eyes open and, your ears have to hear, you know, right. just like you went with the word, right? You know, right. people that have cold, cold hearts and aren't listening, well, they're going to suffer. The same thing here with the stock market. You know, it's, it's, it's right in front of us if people care to look at it. You know, I know that, uh, of course, we teach uh, to the folks, of course, the biblical principles of giving. We know that through giving, uh, when you give, the, the Bible says, give, it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall... Uh, men given to your bosom. We know the, the, the Malachi's promise of tithing, the, that when you bring your first fruits to the Lord, the Lord will rebuke the devourer and the windows of heaven open. So if people are, are, are giving and are following the laws of God, then whatever you put your hand to shall prosper. So, you know, I, I, that, that's where it all starts. First of all, you got to get things right with God and then, then you can hear what the Lord is saying. You can listen. And not everybody can uh, participate in this. I mean, not everybody would understand it. Not everybody wants to, but there are some folks out there, which I, we've got followers out there who are investors. We've heard from all time. They have been blessed. They have had great returns simply because they're following the laws of God, but it wouldn't hurt if they also had some uh, insight, especially you're studying the actual patterns of the weather, and then it confirms with patterns of the market and when god's hand is on you or any individual you know then that's a whole different game uh bob i mean it's isn't it am i right i mean do you pray when you're thinking <laughs> about investing <laughs> oh of course you know i i actually I, I just pray for god for wisdom and and for me to use my gifts and so you know the results are i don't know what god's ultimate plan is on any given situation so i just uh I just trust that that his plan is good, and you know. But you brought up a good point too around giving and, and things like that. Is and I want people to be clear too is that the things that we give away for free is is probably enough for most folks to to get on the right direction. The things that we're talking about today, and you know, the things that we charge for just helps you that much more. And for people who can't trade, I encourage everybody to start start you know, thinking about being an ant and not a grasshopper and make sure that you have, you know, some 
some cash or some silver put away, some food stores to put away, you know, so that you right. can, these disruptions that are coming, and we see how inept the government is, and you see the people in Venezuela starving, is that you need to be able to ride out some some minor shocks that are, are absolutely going to occur. And so those are kind of things that have nothing to do with trading, but you can learn from. If we have food shocks. You know, people will wipe out Costco in about an hour. You need to make sure that you're not sitting there with nothing, that you've already took, you know, proactive measures and, and, and make sure that your family is in good shape and then that you can take care of others that, that may not have been, uh, been so, uh, you know, well, weren't I guess prepared. smart enough to, to do it. That's yeah, a absolutely. question. If there was a major power outage in uh, Chicago or Atlanta, and a, a, just absolute all power, okay, because of an EMP attack from China or a CME from a massive solar flare that just fried the grid. And for uh, there's no power for 10 days. What would happen? Well, one of two things are going to happen. Well, people will die for sure because most people have less than one day's worth of food in their home. The, the, the dependency crowd, which is now getting up to some, in some of those cities, 30 or 40 percent of the people, uh, they live, they live uh, day to day. Last time the EBT, you know, uh, the SNAP system went down here in L.A., people were rioting within two days. So I would think that, you know, if you can get out of the city, you better get out fast because uh, people will just loot and steal and, and rob. And I think there'll be absolute pandemonium within two or three days because people don't have food. They don't have water, water. in their home. They don't even know how the basics of self-reliance, and it'll it'll be awful. You know, the irony is that most of the liberals who put us in these situations live next to the people that are so dependent on them, and so, you know, I think they'll it's, get firsthand taste as to uh, the nature of the beast they created. And, and this is a point. Wow. Okay. And, and uh, this point of the nanny state, which is what socialism brings. It doesn't breed uh, entrepreneurs. It doesn't create an atmosphere of prosperity. It creates an atmosphere of despair. It sets people up to where they have to beg the state. They have to beg to stay alive. That, that you have to have these, uh, these, the elitists in charge. They're the only way you're going to get your foods. The only way you're going to get your... It's basically setting people up for the end times perfectly. So uh, your point is, if some kind of shock was to hit... They would be the first to understand what the, the uh, what they've created is a, a massive need. People's massive need for food and water. They would turn on them in a heartbeat. Wow. Well, yeah, so, you know, when I was a kid, I I always wondered why people would curse God when these things would happen. I'm like, who would curse God? But you know, it, and now now people curse God for the littlest things. So it's just amazing how cold the world has become in the last 20 years. Folks, this is Bob. Kudla and uh, his company, of course, is uh, Trade Genius and his website, www.tradegenius.co. Go there, check it out. And uh, I just love your attitude, Bob. I really do. I love your attitude. And I love the spirit of the Lord that's upon you. And may the Lord bless you. All right. May he really bless you. And well, thank you and protection and blessings on you as well. All right. We'll be talking again. That's fascinating. Thank fascinating. you, sir. All right. God bless. God bless.